Hi! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your character invisible. It will have an additional distortion effect on it. All of this will be done in post-process, so there is no translucent material used. It's very efficient. Instead of translucency, we will use a feature that is called Custom Dev. So now I will revert all the changes I made. This is how it looks like. Just a normal character running around. Mm -hmm. The first thing we need to do is to create a post-process volume. A post-process volume applies a post-processing shader onto the screen. It's very important to set unbound here, because otherwise it will apply its effect only inside this box. With unbound it works everywhere. Fine. Now let us create a material. The only thing we need to change is the material domain. Let's set post process here. And please make sure that blendable location is set to after tone mapping, not before tone mapping. Fine. The contents of our screen are provided by the node which is called scene texture. Scene texture and the scene texture ID is post process input zero. This is, this is the content of our screen. The only output is emissive color. So let's attach color to emissive color. And for it to have any visible effect, let's multiply this color by, for example, a green color. Apply. Now to enable the effect, we need to go to post process volume, into its settings. Let's find the blendables. Add the first element, choose Asset Reference, and drag and drop our material. Fine, it works. So what about this transparency effect, this distortion? As you can see, the scene texture node has UVs as its input. These UVs are coordinates of every pixel. Imagine the post-processing shader running over every pixel on the screen. And each of these pixels has to read its contents from the scene texture. So the UVs are just a location of the pixel on this scene texture. It's equivalent to using texture coordinates texture coordinate without any modification. So U tiling 1, V tiling 1. As you can see it's the same. But if we modify these coordinates, then the pixels will read from a different part of the texture. For example, now we have scaled the coordinates. Everything is scaled twice. And this is what we are going to use. This is what we are going to use to our advantage. Let's go back to 1 here. I will use a normal map. Can be any normal map for now. I will take only the
this normal map looks like this, but I will only use the red and green channel from it. So component mask, red, green, this is how it looks like. The default texture coordinates, when visualized as color values, look like that. So you can see increasing green and increasing red is equivalent to increasing x values and y values. 0, half, 1. Now, if I add the normal map, to these coordinates, like this, then this is what I get. Distorted UVs. The effect is too strong for now and goes only in right and down directions. So first let me subtract a constant half. So this distortion goes in both directions, and then multiply it to change the strength of this effect. A scalar parameter will help me with that. Distortion strength. I multiply the normal map by distortion strength of, for example, 0 0.1. Cool. Now I can control this effect like that. So let's see what using this UVs gives us. This is uh, standard. These are the standard coordinates, and if we replace them by our new coordinates, then the screen looks like that. It's heavily distorted, as you can see, but fortunately we can control the strength. 0 0.01 looks okay. Of course, we can change this map. Use something else. If the texture is too small, then UV tiling 0.1 will scale it 10 times. Uh huh. 0.3 maybe. Yeah, fine. So our basic distortion effect works very well. Now we need two things. First, it should be applied only inside the character's silhouette. Only inside the shape of the character, not on the whole screen, obviously. And the second thing is that we need to make the character invisible. So let us close this post-process shader for a moment. I will show you how it looks like. Okay. Let's go to post-process volume and disable it for a while, <laughs> so we can see anything. Okay. Let's select the character. And let us now proceed to this custom dev feature. 
The dev buffer is a buffer that contains the information about how far the pixel is from the camera. When we are up close, it goes dark because it's near zero, but for far away objects, it's increasing towards white because the values of the distance increase. Now, there is a special buffer that is called custom dev, which contains the dev only of the selected objects, only of the objects that have custom dev writing enabled. Custom dev is enabled inside the mesh, so let us select the character And here is the rendering tab, and inside this rendering tab we have an option to render custom dev pass. As you can see, enabling this shows the dev of the object in the custom dev buffer. That's, what, that's exactly what we need. Save. Now, inside the post process shader, we can extract this information by using scene texture. Now, not post process input 0, but custom dev. And to see anything meaningful, we need to compare this custom dev with a standard scene dev, because this scene dev contains dev of every pixel and this custom dev only of our character, with all other pixels being transparent. Now, if we add a value to the standard scene dev, for example, making it more deep is like offsetting all this dev, that 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 2, and so on. Then if we compare these two values, then only for the character they will be different. Because all, all pixels that not cover the character are empty in custom dev. This is our first color, mask, component mask, sorry, component mask, because it's not a color, it's a single value, and the same here. This if node works like that. If A as is greater than B or equal, then use the first value, and if it's lower than B, so if the scene dev with added 1 is smaller than custom dev, then use 1. Or maybe the other way, 1 and 0. Let's see what it does. Put it inside the missive color for now. Apply back to lit and enable this post process again. Fine. If the values of the def on our character are different than the rest of the scene, the pixels output 1. We will take the standard contents of the screen with normal coordinates and the distorted texture okay. and if this is on a character then use the distorted texture, 
while outside the character use the standard texture. Ok. That's it. That's exactly what we need. Inside the character we have the distortion, outside we don't have it. I will show you the shader. This is the shader. The mask. The distorted texture. Screen texture. And the standard scene texture. Ok. Now there is one thing we need to do. Because as you can see, the character is still here. Ok, it gets distorted, but it isn't invisible. So back to the character's mesh. Yeah, by default it's hidden. So let's expand it. And there is render in main path. If we disable it, the character disappears. It writes only to the custom dev path. That's what we need. So disable render in main path, enable custom dev path, and we are done. Thanks and good luck with your projects. Bye.